be playing around in the. Are you gonna bring in uh, characters from outside the X? You know, I, I know I saw that Nick Fury was in the first issue. Oh, whole, everybody shows up at the funeral, including Wanda and Pietro, who have to be a little kaptegaflugen over Magneto's death because you know like it or not there's a blood relation and what does that mean to them in terms of being an Avenger and in terms of just being a human being um, but Reed and, and his family's there uh, we're, we're just we're, we're bringing in everybody as is appropriate but again the, the focus here is on the X-Men and yes there are another 40 books in in the earth 161 comic book line we just don't see them right. mm -hmm. so the ff are doing what they do and the avengers are doing what they do but they're down in new york we're up in salem center if not gallivanting around the world and the same goes with splintering you know all the characters that existed as of the first half of uncanny whatever the hell my last issue was and X-Men 1, 2, and 3 that was 270 something exist but we only see them from the perspective of these of these 22 pages every bi-weekly Every by two weeks. So something we were something we were talking about on the way up. Something that that kind of Dark Phoenix really um, solidified for everybody who read it. I think was yeah. There was the, the stakes were high and things happened. They weren't alluded to. They weren't mm -hmm. suggested. They happened and they were very impactful. And yeah, through uh, you know editorial decisions and you know management of of these big arcs, everything is subsequently undone and st and especially now. Um, as much as I love Marvel Comics, I read so many Marvel Comics, it's so, so incredibly managed. Um, do you feel that, that, that you would have the ability or desire to start a, uh, to do any work within Marvel uh, current continuity, like the 616 kind of post House of M, post kind of... Um, you know all these crossover civil war and things like that is there do you think there's a place for you or is it too restrictive it's not altogether my decision yeah. um i the first rule of writing is never say no yeah <laughs> that's true yeah uh if i guess you have the freedom with with x-men forever to yeah to to really break the the, the restrictions that all of these events have kind of put in place to just, yeah, take your idea and keep going with it. Um. Much to the frustration of a number of fans who e yeah. expect me to do something different. Yeah. But that's, that's the nature of the beast. I mean, the, the thing is that... that there will be presumptions that people made based on the realities that they saw in existence at that time mm -hmm. that may turn out to be not valid for equally valid alternative reasons. Yeah. But that's something you'll have to wait and discover as we go along. I mean, the interesting thing I'm finding is that In essence, the first six issues cover the f first, if you're lucky, maybe 72 hours, but in reality, more like 24, yeah. maybe 36 hours of these events. Mm -hmm. That's a lot going on in a very short amount of time, and people are, st the cast is still trying to deal with it. Yeah. A lot of revelations have suddenly become clear have been made and and a lot of things have been unearthed especially in the last eight pages of five 
that they've got to deal with. Yeah. And that's going to take a little time. And you'll see it unfold over the next six weeks as they go off uh, to South America and as we culminate in Logan's funeral in issue 10. But this is a process. It's Everything isn't going to be shoveled out immediately. Mm -hmm. There will be pieces. And the other thing to bear in mind is what we know or think we know as readers is not necessarily what the characters know in that specific point of time as themselves. Mm -hmm. Hanks just discovered this information. Hanks just now conveyed it to the team. They've got to process it and deal with it and move on from there. Hanks got to figure out how much of it's real and how much of it's true. He's just, we, I, I can't think of any mutants who are older than this point. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of readers have, have written in saying, well, there's all the, the three guys from Freedom Force. Well, okay, let's think about that for a minute. It's we're getting up to 2010. So the three guys from Freedom Force are at minimum, at minimum in their late 70s, probably 80s. Yeah. And actually one of them's dead anyway. Um, you don't know what can do. We haven't seen them actually in a while. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen them since whenever, at least in my terms, since whenever they last appeared in Uncanny. And so what state they're in at that point, who knows? 